Thank you very much and good afternoon everybody. Um, we're very conscious that we're the last talk of the last talks of the day and we're between the drinks. So we will be, we won't be swift, but we hope that um, we'll be able to contribute to what has been a really interesting set of talks. I know I've certainly learnt a lot. Um, and I think uh, what we're going to talk to you about today will um, certainly add to that as well. Um, my name is Vicky McGuinness. I run a research centre in the University of Oxford called Torch. And my colleague, Ted, uh, works in the IT services also in the University of Oxford. Um, and is actually probably the more creative of, of the partnership here. And I think you'll see that as we go through. Um, our colleague who couldn't be here today is from the Pitt Rivers, and so this is actually within the University of Oxford collaboration between the collections that sit with the university and uh, the research centre that I run called Torch. Um, my background is actually in museums, which is why I'm very much into collections um, and very much uh, focusing what we do in the research centre on that aspect of engagement, that two-way interaction, um, and certainly uh, was a hook I needed when I moved from museums into a research centre, uh, because moving into a research centre, there are no collections. What was I doing? I was used to building galleries and communicating to new audiences, but actually a research centre has ideas, it has stories, and that's what we're going to talk to you about today as we developed a combined app project to showcase not only the research, but collections. Just a little bit about Torch. So um, the University of Oxford is a very old institution, uh, and what I represent is a very young part of it. So uh, Torch itself is only five years old, um, and what we do is we facilitate research within the humanities. And, but we also do it in a multidisciplinary way, and we connect with external partners. Now, that can be museums, theatre groups, but also it's about mental health, well-being, environment. So quite often our partners are industry partners, the NHS. Um, to be honest, anyone that is willing to come and collaborate with us, we are quite good at building those bespoke collections. So I'll just leave that with you all to think about, and you can see our emails at the end if you'd like to come and talk to us. Um, but again, a lot of people have touched on stats today, and that's something that we also uh, are very keen to look at, because part of what we're looking for with the impact agenda, of course, is REF, the Research Excellence Framework. So much of this project also has that in mind. It's not only audience focus and community engagement, it's also looking at supporting and evidencing what we need to put forward for REF. Um, REF is probably only about 10% of what we do at Torch, um, and actually it's more about uh, making really good connections and really deepening uh, community engagement. Um, so in our fifth year, we, uh, we collaborated with very different partners, and we put together research-led events that brought in audiences of about 15,000 people, which sounds like uh, a modest amount, but again, in our first year, it, it was around the 4,000 mark, so steadily growing and ensuring that those links are substantive and going forward. And this app project is actually a really good opportunity for that because it's not just a get it done, get it out, and it's, it's there. This project is actually about halfway through, so we're showing you a little bit of um, you know, behind the scenes work before we actually launch it next year in 2018. And I've put here just our headline themes, which is how we came to collaborate with uh, Ted and his team. Um, humanities and identities. What we noted at Torch was that a lot of the research groups that were coming together were related to diversity elements. And uh, we are also very keen to always celebrate difference, uh, not only visible, but invisible. So that includes race, gender, social uh, background, um, religious diversity, and any way or any intersections that that could be interpreted. Um, so with that in mind, um, we also collaborate with larger institutions. It not only brings up the amazing opportunities that we've heard some of already, where they have really good, deep connections with hard to reach audiences. Now, rather than reinvent the wheel, uh, partnering with places like the Ashmolean shown here, um, we're able to connect uh, with much larger audiences, but also reach audiences we wouldn't be able to get on our own. 
So uh, last year we were part of um, the National Being Human Festival, which is something we've been part of for three years now. And they are a fantastic team. They're a very small team in London, um, but they put on hundreds of events, collaborating with lots of different people across the country. And this was our event, Fright Friday, which was a late night at the museum of, um, in the Ashmolean Museum. Um, we managed to bring in around 2,500, 3,000 people. Um, and then, of course, we're able to evaluate, evaluate those audiences. But what also we were able to do was curate the activities within that, which were uh, included about 30 different researchers from different disciplines, some of whom are also putting together ref impact case studies, and some of whom are early careers. Um, here's an example of some of the activities that were going ahead. So it could be anything from interactive games, it could be opera performances we have here at the bottom as well. Um, we had a school group uh, who had put together their own performance uh, identifying and talking about uh, homophobic bullying. Um, LGBT narratives and history is a very important part of what we do at Torch as well. And um, yes, that is a volcano on the forecourt for of the Ashmolean. So, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing what they let you do. Uh, but it's also uh, a core cool piece of research uh, for a particular volcanologist, so not just humanities as well. And now I'm going to hand over to Ted, who will tell you a bit more about projects. Yep. <clears throat> so my team in IT services, we work around the museum, uh, partnering both creatively and technically with researchers and academics and students. And we've been working a lot with the university museums and collections. Uh, my background is also in museums. Uh, and some examples, the Pitt Rivers Museum, we developed an app that was a location-based audio trail. So we used eye beacons in the, um, in the museum to um, locate the visitor and tell them stories about the, um, the various objects. Sensing Evolution, the one with the uh, strange looking symbol down there, uh, that is a scavenger hunt for school groups through the Museum of Natural History. Uh, at the end there is Resound, which is an app with the bit collection in the Ashmolean where we um, developed an app where you can actually play the instruments. So to play a violin, you move your hand like this in a bowing motion, and you can blow into the phone to, uh, to play a trumpet. And we've got a number of historic instruments. Pocket Curator was with the Museum of the History of Science, and that has audio, video, um, and interactive experiences, one of which is a um, virtual sextant, where you use the phone to tilt and line up um, the sun with the horizon, and you get a latitude reading. So that last project, came out of a research project we did called the Hidden, the Hidden Museum. And we ran about 50 research sessions. And what we were really interested in, we were interested in um, finding out what type of content works with visitors, what some of the parameters around um, length and format, and the way that the, the content is presented, the way that it's triggered to museum visitors. And these are some of our headline findings. Uh, so audio, audio, audio. It, provides the best heads up experience. We really didn't want the mobile to be the distraction, the thing that's in between you and the objects or you and the, the displays. Um, and it, you know, it encourages heads up engagement, especially if you can um, cue the, the listener to, to look at various things or to go around the object or that sort of thing. Um, video really needs justification because it just draws them down to the screen and away from the object. So if you can do it with audio, great. If video adds something, I mean, if you're showing how something works or taking something apart, then, then people do engage with that. Um, there's all sorts of whizzy ways to trigger content. Um, some of them work really well, some of them don't. I won't go into that right now. Um, length of material, under a minute, people start looking down to see how long it's going at about 45 seconds. And you can just see that behavior really. They, they start to get bored. Uh, clear association with the object, don't repeat things, keep things simple. Everything on the screen must be um, valuable. It must add value to the experience. Um, some of these things sound obvious, and lots of research does sound obvious in retrospect. But when you're in the heat of developing something, a lot of the opposite things sound like the best idea ever. So I'm going to hand it back over to Vicky to talk about another project that fed into the one that we're about to do, or about to talk about. Okay, so um, basing it on those research groups which were looking at gender, race and resistance, for example, um, a lot of what we do at Torches is, is bottom-up approach. So it's rather than us 
completely setting the agenda. It's actually looking at the research landscape and saying, okay, we have, we have a critical mass here. We have potential for a great partner here. Um, and that's what we do, particularly when it comes to, as I've mentioned, connections with uh, the NHS and patient-related uh, projects, but also with uh, creative industries. There is um, a lot we can do there and a lot we will do moving forward. Um, and this is one example of that. So we wanted to raise the profile of a lot of those hidden histories uh, in Oxford, uh, some of which are related to the university. Um, of those of you that know Oxford as well, um, it is actually a very uh, fantastically diverse city. Um, it's a fantastic place with lots of different stories, but a lot of them don't always get as, are not always as visible as they could be. So, uh, being a museum's person and uh, following the example of the Ashmolean with different examples they put around the city, we decided to make the city our gallery. So, there is lots of railings in Oxford and there's lots of places you can't quite get into, but those railings are also an opportunity. So, the images you see here represent some of the uh, dozen or so pictures that we uh, co-curated with researchers, community groups, uh, and people with individual stories about themselves uh, that we put up for a month in the middle of the city on some of the most iconic buildings. So the Radcliffe Camera, the Sheldonian Theatre, the old Radcliffe Infirmary, which is the first hospital in Oxford. So really prominent in your face places. And that was, that was completely on purpose, of course. Um, so all over Oxford, as you can see, the, the center space, but of course, that's great, and we, we evaluated it, and it, the actual process, I mean, talking about the process of, of doing the project was really important too, because these are people's personal stories as well. These are people. And humanities, if nothing else, is about being human. Um, and being able to co-curate the words and the, the images was a really good, sometimes, first step to reaching and talking to communities, rather than saying, come in and look at our things, which is a great thing to do too, it's what do you want to say? What do you want to show? And the whole point was to challenge, uh, what is Oxford? Oxford is many things, but actually some of these stories hadn't been heard before, and that's an opportunity to do that. Then moving on from that, that's up for a month, that's great. But actually, this uh, app project and having the uh, skills and of, of my colleagues, being able to bring that into something that is um, affordable and sustainable long term is uh, an app project. So it's not picking up the community group and then being like, great, we've done a project. There's actually a long term uh, basis and opportunity there. And of course, within all of this, there is also uh, research woven in too. So, as um, she's mentioned an app project several times, um, what, we're, what we were trying to do is build a platform for, um, we, we built lots of trails, so sensing evolution, the Pitt Rivers trails, we wanted to build a platform that allowed lots of different people to create trails by telling stories about objects and places. Um, there's lots of design challenges here. One is the very definition of a story. I mean, my definition of a story is probably a lot more conversational and chatty than, say, Vicky's or a researcher's or a student's. We've probably heard the word story used a million times today, and it meant something different each time. Now, we're adding on top of that all these other concepts. So we have, um, what we're asking people to do is add, add stories, whatever those are, to objects or places around Oxford, however you define those. Um, to build a trail for people to follow and to tag them with themes, right? And all this is going to go into an app, right? And so I'm sure as I've said those words, you all have maybe a picture in your mind of this thing that we might be building. And I bet the person next to you has a completely different picture. So um, on top of that, we have the different contexts in which um, people will use this. So we want to have students to be able to contribute their stories and researchers to contribute those, or theirs, sorry. Um, with students, we know that they're likely to go to do it as an assignment maybe, go into the museum or go to a place in Oxford and take photos on their phone and perhaps take a video of themselves telling the story. With a researcher, they're very likely to, to be typing out very well-considered cited prose into a Word document, go find some archival images, make sure they have the rights to them and all of this, and then copy and paste that material into the, uh, into the app. 
And then you have administrators like those on Vicky's team who get all of those Word documents and all of those photos from various researchers and have to build a trail out of that. And so, again, we're looking for diversity in the types of stories people are telling and the types of material they're using to tell those stories, but we have to provide some sort of simple framework. And we, as developers, have to um, have very specific notions of what these things are. We have to tell, and, and the computer needs to know what a story is, what a trail is, what an object is, what a place is. And so we have to impose some sort of structure while maintaining that flexibility, and that's a challenge. So we went through a design process of three workshops. One was for people we knew would be contributing, and we took them through several activities to find out the sort of, the sort of content that they wanted to provide, um, their workflow, Everyone has a very different workflow, actually. And those turned into sort of user journeys through the content creation part of the app. Um, we had a second workshop for sort of end users, people we know um, would want to um, cons uh, consume is the wrong word, but to, to experience and engage with these stories. Um, and these were more focus group sort of questions that we would ask them. Uh, we went away, built some wireframes, especially the, the back end, the content creation part, and had a third workshop to go through those. And with the content creation part, once we had a working prototype, we did some task-based task user testing to, to make sure that it was familiar and easy to use. And we learned quite a lot out of that. Um, and we'll have some evaluation with end users upcoming in the, in the spring. So what did we build? This is the back end, first of all. So when you log in as a content creator, as a, as a student or researcher to develop a story, um, you're presented with your, your dashboard. And at the top are just some very simple instructions. Select a place or an object, create a story, um, create, or, sorry, add a story to that object, and then add that story to a trail. And you can see there there's um, the objects and places that are already in the system. There's, that's the last page, there's quite a few more. Um, and a very tiny button that says add a new place or object. The reason that's so tiny is we really want to encourage people to use the objects and places um, if they're there that are already in the system because we don't want duplicates and we want multiple stories attached to these objects by different voices. And so um, we want to encourage them to find it first. If you tap, and then there's access to the stories you've written, all the stories and trails, that sort of thing. You tap on an or you click on an object, or tap if you're on a, on a device, and it's a fairly standard form to add your story. There's title, there's a summary, um, there's um, rich text, and then you've got the ability to add various types of media, so photos, video, um, and you can link from you know, YouTube or Vimeo, Vimeo or our own podcasting service, so for university lectures, that sort of thing. Um, and to add themes. And you can see these are tick boxes, but you can also add your own theme. And the other important thing is an author profile, because we want to make sure that attribution, and it's very important that you, you realize that these stories come from different people. Once you've done that, you can start dragging and dropping your stories into your trail, or a trail that already exists. Um, notice that these are not just your stories. These are all the stories that are part of, um, or that you have access to. And that's important too, because we wanted to make sure that we encourage sort of remixing um, content so that a trail might have stories from other trails and you've got multiple perspectives and they've been reframed. Um, so this is what the front end looks like. And when you first go to Oxford Stories, you get a big sign that says in development, because it's still in development. Um, Pit Rivers, that's an app. Um, Out in Oxford is an app that has quite a few um, objects and places around Oxford um, related to um, uh, LB, I can never say it, yes. Um, we have the te our test app and we have the Torch app, which is what I'm taking you through on the next two slides. So when you first get to Torch, um, you can see that there's three trails, one of which is the gaps between, and you saw Vicky mentioned that before. Um, you've got a nearby button, which allows you to see what stories are just nearby you. And then you've got themes, so you can navigate by conceptual content as well. So when you tap on a theme, you get all the stories related to that theme. If you tap on a trail, you get a map showing the locations of, of places around Oxford, um, and you get a list of stories. Okay, and then when you tap on a story, you can see the location and you can, you can also navigate by theme. I'm gonna, we're running short on time, so I'm handing it right back over to Vicky to talk about this content. 
So yeah, just to wrap up, um, as we said, this is still in development, but this gives you a few examples of some of the content we've developed. So uh, Merz Tate was a world-class professor in her field, studied in Oxford in the 1930s, and from the archives at St Anne's College, we found this image. Um, when I say we, I mean the wonderful Dr. Imabong Umaron, who uh, was one of our early career researchers. And so this is one of the images that we actually installed in that exact position in the Radcliffe County camera and is now uh, forever in this app. Um, there is also, for example, when Malcolm, o Malcolm X came to Oxford and spoke at the Oxford Union shortly before um, his death. And of course, you can see there, there's also the opportunity for audio and video. Um, so we would highly encourage you to get in touch with us if you have any ideas for collaboration. And uh, we look forward to sharing the app with you in 2018 when we finish the project. And thank you very much. <laughs>